Welcome to Smart News Digital. Now we are going to see about the Hindu analysis dated 20th September 2018. These are some of the topics which are potentially can be asked in mains and prelims. So now we can see one by one in detail. Now the first article is based on triple talaq. It is the author has said that it is an impatient move on the ordinance of the triple talaq. So what is triple talaq? Triple talaq is the practice by which Muslim man can divorce his wife by saying three times talaq. So it is the practice prevalent in the Indian Muslim community especially among the Hanafi school of thought. But it is not common in other Muslim countries. Last year in June 2017, Supreme Court has struck down the practice of triple talaq as an illegal procedure as it is violating of Article 14 and 15 and stated as it is unconstitutional. Following the Supreme Court's judgment, the Lok Sabha has passed a bill stating that triple talaq as a criminal offence. But Rajya Sabha has not passed it as there was a lack of consensus among the members. So, but it was taken through the ordinance procedure to resolve the issue. This ordinance procedure was an impatient move as stated by the author. How it is going to become an impatient move? Now we are going to seeing that. The statutory form for this triple talaq bill was aided by the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Bill to make it as a criminal offence. The bill made this form of divorce punishable by a three-year prison term and a fine. So now the issue is taking up such a recourse amounts to subversion of the parliamentary process as it is not uh, having a consensus among the Rajya Sabha members. The changes to be introduced through ordinance are as follows. The complaint have to be filed by the victim itself or a blood relative only then the complaint will be taken as cognizable or otherwise if the complaint has been taken up in the police station even after that the parties themselves can resolve by coming to a mutual consensus. And the third one is a magistrate can also grant a bail to the husband after hearing the wife then what are the core issues related to this law is marriage being a civil subject taking into a legal pro prosecutions and jail terms all doesn't sound good so it is an issue and then the law is a self-contradictory because a marriage to continue and a propose a jail term for the offending husband that is if a wife files a complaint against her husband after taking a jail term also the marriage cannot be go properly because it won't continue a good relationship stating these as the reasons the author concludes that it is not the right way of uh, taking the bill through an ordinance route and making it as a law and posing as a criminal offense now the second article is upping the ant on the US China trade war. The ongoing US China trade war shows a shift from multilateralism towards unilateralism and it is a protectionism so which is not good for a global trade order. Now recently the US administration announced that it would be slapping 200 billion worth of Chinese export with 10% tariff ratcheting up to 25% by the year end. After a warning that if China takes a retaliatory actions against US farmers as perceived by Mr. Trump. So ultimately almost 6000 items will be hit by the new US tariffs which is not good for the for our Indian trade also. Retaliating this China would apply a tax tariff tune to about 60 billion dollars which is not go goes good and the trade war goes on like this. On both sides of the tariff war, economic pain is likely to be widely distributed even to our Indian markets. So now we are going to see what is the likely trajectory of this conflict. A common consequence for uh, of this uh, trade war is there will be a shrinkage in bilateral trade volumes between US and China and also businesses in US, China and other nations that are trading with these two countries will be put under economic trouble. There will be also a reversal of the globalization of the supply chains. For example, Apple iPhone that has been designed by US and patented by US company which has to be manufactured in China and sold in US market, there will be a distortion in this supply chain because of this trade war. Now what are the impacts on future? This economic isolationism and protectionism policy of US adding upon retaliating tariffs will make China and other nations to seek alternative markets. As the global trade order gets distorted due to this trade wars, the framers of this world order will also lose authority which means the WTO and other multilateral bodies. Besides these impacts, there would be a loss for world nations 
who had worked hard to establish and credentialize this post world economic order now the third article is preparing for the floods india is witnessing devastating floods as a common phenomena because of the unsustainable human activities the author is finding out the factors which are responsible for this recent kerala floods the first one is reluctant dam managers the world bank analysis in its national hydrology project in 2015 showed that although weather forecast are more accurate now the dam managers are reluctant to act based on the forecasting when developed nations has already moved to the dynamic reservoir operation based on weather forecast india is still following a traditional method of dam management besides proper dam management there is also needed a plan b such as inter basin transfers linking canals to intermediate storage structures and water reallocation to higher priority uses as a second factor the author states about the blocked waterways what is that blocking the waterways is that improper construction planning with a formal permission see how it's ironic and the district and local panchayats have no mandate or interest in maintaining to reduce the flood risk the state disaster management agency also ignores them this is a problem for waterways being blocked So it is the need of the hour to focus on a river basin specific flood inundation modeling with climate change simulations as experimented by Department for International Development UK in Mahanathi waters of Chhattisgarh and local community has to co-manage water resources with the government by planning intermediate storage drainage and emergency responses The third factor as author suggests is the unprepared populations. India being a signatory to UN's Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction, it is the responsibility of the government to take this framework to the people. But also social media have not worked out here as most people were caught unawares by the ferocity of the flooding. And most modern cities have elaborate flood management plans like underground flood basins and spare river beds in Netherlands but not India has this is the problem what we face the way forward is we must prioritize buffers flexibility and adaptability in the sense reviewing of safety criteria of the dams and canals rebuilding these with higher safety factors and adhering to the international standards and creating new intermediary storages and introducing dynamic reservoir management what's the problem we face is india has not learnt a lessons from the recent floods see history will repeat itself if not in kerala it would happen in somewhere else so finally we must reduce the vulnerability of the poor who pay disproportionately higher cost in these calamities now the fourth article is bringing data under the rule of law with the supreme court's mandate of right to privacy as a fundamental right it is the obligation of the government to bring data under the rule of law internet activists consider the internet is being out of law politics and government in a digital society data needs to be subjected under the rule of law the new data protection authority proposed by shri krishna committee should be actually made as a constitutional authority if you see in developed nations like european union france and uk there are some current policy initiatives proposing national data sharing regimes and data in- infrastructure so this reinforces that data should be definitely brought under the rule of law it is necessary that the global social cultural and economic political integration must be promoted without sacrificing the effectiveness of nationally organized rule of law it is in the need of the hour because the digital societies and economies get ruled globally by the most powerful corporations and governments which work in a mutually reinforcing manner in this regard data localization attempts to bring back the rule of law to our digital and data fight existence this needs to integrate a wide range of social political and economic perspectives as well and legal and democratic requirements for local data regimes have to be appropriately balanced with the values of the global digital integration so this is the need of the hour so the data localization and data related matters have to be brought under the rule of law 
the fifth article is bonds to rescue the rupee the recent fall of rupee can be attributed to the following two reasons the first being the foreign portfolio investments are pulling out and the capital is moving out of the markets the second reason being the indian exports are losing demand as well as the oil imports are hiking this sharp slide in the value of the rupee has led to a speculation that RBA might opt to issue NRI bonds. So here comes the NRI bonds. What are NRI bonds? So NRI bond is a bond issued by the Reserve Bank of India to the non-resident Indians which offer higher returns than other similar investments. So this might be a temporary solution for the rupees fall and to bring back the rupee getting further depreciated. The sixth article is can't curb liberty on conjecture, says Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has warned the Maharashtra government that in the recent arrests of rights activists in the Bhima Karigan violence case, the additional solicitor general of Maharashtra has opined the Supreme Court to hear the matter fully. For which the court has replied that that personal liberty cannot be sacrificed at the altar of conjecture and the court deliberated that the state should first learn to distinguish between dissent against government policies and subversion of law and order. Now the seventh article is with PM Modi, Afghan President Ghani raises issues of IS and Pakistan terrorists. This was raised because the National Investigation Agency has announced that Kabul has deported an Indian national who had travelled to Afghanistan in an attempt to join Islam Islamic State. Adding to this, the Afghan president says we need to devise a way to separate what is internal to and what is regional and global. This statement reinstates that the Taliban are not foreigners but are those Afghan nationals whom they are willing to negotiate and come to a peace. Responding to this, New Delhi supported its stand that it would back the Afghan government on its decision to engage the Taliban in talks. The peace with the Taliban was important to the security forces could concentrate on fighting other terrorist groups like the Islamic State Al-Qaeda and so on. The eighth article is South Korea wants to elevate its ties with India. The South Korean government's aspiring new southern policy has a goal of deepening ties with Southeast Asian nations as well as India and building an inclusive regional architecture in Asia for which the South Korean government sought India to be more vocal about the maritime security in the region and reinstated that there are increasing activities by China in the Indian Ocean region. There are also concerns about the BRI as China is pursuing BRI projects unilaterally or bilaterally. This is regarded as a problem. And moreover, the South Korea's main policy objective was, was not to get subsumed to the US-China rivalry in Asia and the US-China trade wars. The ninth article is rationalization of the centrally sponsored schemes mooted. This was commented by the former finance commission chairman N.K. Singh that many centrally sponsored schemes are boutique in nature and having a dubious outcomes. Also warned that the public financing in states remains stressed owing to the payments made towards the 7th pay commission, loan waivers given to the farmers and debt restructuring under the Udai scheme. As the state governments have already demanded an increased flow of untied fiscal resources in place of tied resources that come with centrally sponsored schemes, it is necessary to rationalize the centrally sponsored schemes. Thank you.